Hello everyone, this is Grade 6, Module 6, Lesson 13, Problem Set. So, uh, to look at the lesson summary up at the top, um, looks like we're going to be talking about the interquartile range uh, in this section. So, finding different quartiles and then summarizing data that way. <clears throat> so, when you look at Problem Set uh, 1, A says... How do you think the data might have been collected? And um, for that one, I'm going to let you fill that one in because that's a your thought type question. Uh, just keep in mind that you're looking at temperatures or uh, average monthly high temperatures. So how could this have been uh, collected in terms of um, how are they getting these temperatures? B says... Do you think it would be possible for one-fourth of the temperatures in the month of July for St. Louis to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit or above? Why or why not? So what we need to do um, when we're looking at average monthly high temperatures, let's take a look first at July. And when we look at July for St. Louis... Oops, it's right there. It's 89 degrees. So is it possible? And again, this is the average monthly high, meaning that's the average of all of the high temperatures for July. So we could have some that are higher and some that are lower. Um, so could a quarter of those temperatures be at 95 or above? Yeah, it is possible. Uh, the mean temperature for St. Louis in July is 89 degrees, and there's 31 days in July. So a quarter of the, um, when we say one-fourth of 31, it's about 8, just over 7. Uh, if the temperatures were 95 for 5 days, uh, we could uh, easily have lower temperatures to average those out, meaning bring that average back down to 89. And there's my explanation right there. I'm going to do them all down below so we have room. C says, make a prediction about how the values of the inner quartile range for the temperatures from each city compare. So, I don't actually have to find uh, the inner quartile range yet. I can see I need to do that down here for B. So, we want to predict. So, what do we think the inner quartile range is going to look like? Not necessarily a number, but comparing these. And I can see that St. Louis, if I look at these, uh, I see that there's an average of 40 and then an average of 89, so my low and my high for that. Um, for San Francisco, we have, I believe 57 is the low, and it looks like 70 is the high. So it's looking like the interquartile range for San Francisco is going to be much smaller because the temperatures aren't as spread out, or there's not as much variability between the temperatures, meaning... Uh, we only have 13 degrees between 57 and 70. We have 49 degrees between 40 and 89 for St. Louis. So uh, to summarize there, the San Francisco uh, interquartile range is going to be much smaller because there's less variability. So there's my explanation right there. And we'll take a look now at D. And um, D is asking us to find the interquartile range for the average monthly high temperatures for each city, uh, and then compare them. So um, <clears throat> I'm not going to get to the comparing piece, but I will find the interquartile range for St. Louis. That way you can see the process to do it for San Francisco. So uh, when we go to D, I'll do interquartile range for St. Louis. So I'm going to list these in order from least to greatest. All of these values... For St. Louis have to be in order least to greatest. So I'll do that right now. So there they are in order from least to greatest. Um, and I have 12 values. That's where I checked it. So now I'm going to find the uh, median. That's going to be the first thing to break my data in half. So I'm going to underline. I'm not going to cross off because I don't want to mess any of these numbers up. And I know I'm going right to the middle. And I'm going to do 3, 4, 5... And then 6. So the median's right here. And I know it's between two numbers. 
uh, 67 and 69. And when I'm between two numbers, I have to find the average of those or the middle point of those. Uh, and that's going to be 68. And if you don't know how to find that, you add these two together. And then you'll divide by 2 because there's two values. So 136 divided by 2. And that's going to get you... Um, whoops. Uh, that'll get you your 68. So that's just finding the median. Now I have two sets of data. I have my lower set and my higher set or my upper set. So what I have to do now is find the um, median of the lower set and the median of the higher or upper set. So again, uh, I'll switch colors here. And i got to find the middle number. And I know it's going to be between 45 and and 55. And again, I could add those two and find the average. And 45 plus 55 is 100. And then I got to divide it by 2 because there were two values. And that's going to get me 50. So now I have uh, my first quartile and my second quartile. I'm going to do the same exact thing over here for the higher or upper. And I know it's between 81 <clears throat> and 86, or 85, sorry, and that gets me 166, which will be, um, it's going to be 83. So I'm going to throw 83 right in there, and from this point I can find the IQR knowing that uh, here is 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, and quartile 4. Uh, so, to find the IQR, or the interquartile range, we have to take the lower quartile median and the upper quartile median. So, uh, lower and upper quartile medians, and we'll find the difference. And I know that uh, 83 minus 50 is going to get me 33. So, the IQR for St. Louis... I that's a Q, R, is 33 degrees. So now I would have to go through and do the same thing for San Francisco. Put them in order from least to greatest, and then find your median, and then find your lower quartile median, your upper quartile median, and find the differences between those. Let's take a look at page two. Here we are on page two, and uh, looks like we have a dot plot that we're going to take care of. The plot shows the years in which each of a hundred pennies were made. So we're looking first at question A. What does the stack of 17 dots at 2012 representing 17 pennies tell you about the age of these pennies in 2014? So uh, it says the 17 in 2012, what does it tell you about the age of these pennies in 2014? And what it tells me is that 17 pennies were made in 2012, and they would be two years old in 2014. So when we take a look at B, here is some information about the sample of 100 pennies. The mean year they were made is 1994, so that's the average. The first year any of the pennies were made was 1958, and that's right here. So the mean is uh, right there, and I'm going to label it mean. It's just helping me on my graph. Um, the newest pennies were made in 2012. So I have some extremes in there, my lower extreme and my upper extreme. Quartile 1 is 1984. So I'm going to go to 84. I'm going to put... Uh, a dash there. The median is 1994, so it's the mean and the median. And quartile 3 is 2006. So right there. Uh, that's quartile 3. The mean absolute deviation is 11 and a half years.
Use the information to indicate the years in which the middle half of the pennies were made. So uh, this is quartile one. So all of this, um, we know that uh, quartile three is right here. So this is going to be two and three to this point. Quartiles two and three. Because here's our median. So really, here's two and here's three. So we have quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and quartile four. So we have our quartiles separated. Now it says use the information to indicate the years in which the middle half of the data, or middle half of the pennies were made. Well, I know that if four uh, quartiles make this up, two of them are going to be uh, the middle. And when we talk about the middle half, we're talking about quartiles two and three. So it's going to be between uh, the years 1984 and it looks like 2000, what did we say? 2006. So 1984 to 2006. So that's when ha the middle half of the data was made, meaning um, that we have an IQR, interquartile range, because these are my two medians of 22 years. Because I just subtracted the 1984 and the 2006 because that is where my interquartile medians are. Which is kind of cool that they gave us that data when they say that quartile 1 and quartile 3, uh, right here in the dates, those are actually the uh, lower and upper quartile ranges, or uh, medians. So I was able to subtract those to get the IQR for it. So they were made within 20, um, 22 years. So let's look at 3. <clears throat> 3 says, in each par of parts, A through C, create a data set with at least 6 values, such that it has the following properties. So you're going to do 3 different ones. Um, for A, uh, a small interquartile range and a big range, meaning maximum and minimum. So I'm going to have a value of 0 and a high value of 100. Now, I need to have a small interquartile range, meaning once I hit the median, or the, uh, yeah, the median, then the lower median and the upper median should be very small from each other. So I want all of these values in here to be similar to each other. So what I'm going to do is just make them all the same. Um, and I'm going to use 10. And what that's going to do is it's going to put the median right here. And it'll put the upper median right here and the lower median right here. So when I subtract 10 and 10, I get zero. So my interquartile range is zero, but the uh, range of it is zero minus 100, which is 100. So that, I think that's pretty good. So just your two, your low number and your high number need to be very spread apart, and your internal numbers need to be similar, very similar, or the same. Now for an interquartile range equal, to the range. Um, this is where your median here and your median here, when you subtract those, it has to equal the same as this. So this set is not going to work for B. Um, but what might work is if I'm working between, uh, I want to start with a value like 10 and my last value is going to be 20. So right now I know my range is 10. So now I want my uh, interquartile range to equal 10. So if I just do uh, all 10s through here, and I do uh, all 20s through here, I know that here is my median because it splits the data into two pieces. Here's my lower, here's my upper, 
median, and when I subtract those two, I get 10, which is the same as the range. So I just did three of the same number on the lower and three of the same number on the upper, and it seemed to work out pretty good. Um, for this one, I'm going to leave that one to you. The lower quartile is the same as the median. Um, I would do the lower half of your data as a similar or same number compared to the last two or three from the upper part of your data. Let's take a look uh, down at the next question. Uh, we got four and five here. Uh, what you're going to do now is rank these three sets uh, by the values of their IQR, interquartile range. So I'll do one. I'll do data set one for the interquartile range, and then that'll at least give you a setup of how to do the interquartile range for three and four, and then you can place them in order. So if I'm going to do this, i got to write the values down. So I'll put the values down for data set one. So there are my values, and what I'm going to do is slide over a little bit and put these here so I can write on them. Um, so what I have to do now is I got to find the interquartile range for this. Uh, and what that means is I got to find first the median of the set to break the data into two pieces. And you'll notice that I didn't just put a zero and then a five. I counted how many dots were above zero, and that's how many zeros I placed. So I had to place three of them based on the dots. And I was counting by fives in there because I figured that was the scale. So now I got to get to the uh, center of the data. I know there's 21 pieces uh, of data here. Uh, and I know that there's going to be 10 on each side. And then the 11th piece of data is going to be right in the center. Um, so I can count to 11 and that's my median. Or what I can do uh, is also count one here, one here, and work my way in uh, till I get to the middle one. And I know that right about here at 10, that's going to be the median of my data. So now uh, I have my uh, lower and upper quartiles, and now I'm going to find the medians within those. So I'm going to find the median of this set and then the median of this set. So uh, again, I know that I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 on each side, so 5 will get me halfway there. 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's going to be right in between uh, 5 and 10, so I could add those two, which is 15, and then divide by 2 to find my average of 7 and a half, or 7 and 5 tenths, and the same thing on the other side, um, so cross one there, one there, one there, there. And I'm kind of working my way towards the middle of the data. And I'm between 20 and 20, which means it's 20. It's an average. Um, so now I find the difference. Because inner quartile range is the uh, inner half of the data, meaning 2 and 3. Quadrants 2 and 3. Those are the, that's the inner two pieces of the data. Inner two halves. So, or the inner half of the data. So I'm going to take 7 and 5 tenths and 20, and I'm going to find the difference. Um, and I know that I'm going to have to borrow, because I had a 0 there. So I'm going to end up with 12 and 5 tenths. So uh, I got my IQR for data set 1 as 12 and 5 tenths. So now what you'll do is you'll find the IQR for data sets 2 and 3, and then you can compare those uh, and rank them. So um, what you'll be doing down at the bottom, here are the number of fries in each of the bags from a restaurant A. So those are bags of french fries. Suppose one bag of data has been overlooked and that bag had only 50 fries. If that value is added to the data set with the IQR change, so you're going to want to find the uh, if you know that, based on what you know about data sets, then you can answer. If not, you're going to have to find the interquartile range of this set 
and then see what that looks like if you added a 50 to it. Maybe not. Maybe you won't have to find an interquartile range with the 50 in there, but just kind of see what that looks like. And then B, will adding another data value always change the IQR? And then give a quick example uh, of that to support your answer. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and good luck on the rest of your problem set.